Okay, welcome to this tutorial on event tables. And as you know, event tables relates to systems analysis and answers the question, what an information system should do. And to answer this question, many of you are familiar with use cases describing what uh, an information system should do. And there are various types of models uh, to, to present this. For example, the unified modeling language and there are diagrams such as the use case diagram and the activity diagram that show all these different use cases. But there is another model used in systems analysis that is called the event table. And this focuses more on events, which is something that occurs at a specific time and place. And it's worth, worth remembering in the system. And um, when the events occur, it executes use cases. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create this event table. So in the event table, there's various types of events. And first off, there's external events, which occur outside the system. There are also temporal events that occur because a point in time reached, and state events that occur because something changes within the system. And if this doesn't make sense right now, um, I'm going to just hold, hold tight and we're going to go ahead and show you some examples of each of these different types of events and how they relate to the event table. So first off, uh, in the event table, we are going to create an external event and we're going to assume that we have a retail store and they have the system online and we have a user who wants to uh, check the, the amount of available items for, for something they want to buy online. So we are going to go to our event table and what would this event be called? Something that happens at a specific place in time, a person wants to look up at the inventory or items remaining online. So let's call this customer or user better yet. User clicks on item in online catalog. Now the trigger is what the system detects that begins the event. So what begins this event? Well, let's call this an inventory request. And since it's, it's an external event, so it's occurring from outside the system, what's, what's the source? Or the, the source is the person that or thing that initiates the event through the trigger. So let's call this the user. Now many times the use case is similar, uh, the, the terminology is similar to that of the event. So what is the actual use case? Let's call this display inventory quantity. And now, if the system executes this use case, there's a response. And a response is what the system outputs as a result of the event. So in this case, it will output a web page inventory report. And then the destination refers to the end destination of each response. So we have something that the system generates, a web page inventory report, and it goes to the user. Great. Now let's go back to our table and let's take a look at temporal events. Now remember, temporal events occur because a point in time is reached. So in the case of this retail store where we're drawing upon these these events uh, many times retail managers need sales reports to know how their inventory is being managed and how they can make strategic decisions to better help their business so let's create an event in our event table for this so what is the event well it's because a point in time is reached so time to produce monthly sales report. Perfect. Now what triggers this? This is the end of the month. 
Now notice that these temporal events, the trigger is going to be surrounded by quotations. And it's important to note that temporal and state events, we'll get to state a little bit later, do not have a source. This is something that occurs within the system. So the system recognizes that it's the end of the month, so the event is the time to produce a monthly sales report. And the use case is going to be produce monthly sales report. And as you'll notice, this is very similar to the terminology used within the event. Now what's the response going to be? Well, let's think about this. They want a sales report, so the system will output a sales report. And who is that going to go to? In this case, we'll say the retail store manager. Great. Uh, let's keep on going here. And now we're going to look at the state events. So the state events occurs because something changes within the system. So we've already done our external event of a customer looking up the available inventory online. We've seen sales reports and now let's let's think of a, a case that a retail store might might run into. Um, inventory is low. Uh, the system recognizes that the inventory is low. So there's going to be a need to reorder more inventory. So let's go back to our event table and create this event. So what's the event going to be in this case? Think about it. All right, the reorder point is reached. Now what's, what's going to trigger this event? Well, like we said, the inventory falls below the reorder point. Let's put a, get rid of that. Oh, whoops. Great. Now, like we said, temporal and state events uh, do not have a source. This is something that occurs within the system. And the use cases are very similar to the event uh, as far as it's worded. So what's going to happen? We're going to reorder inventory. Now, this is an important point I want to bring up, and this is um, the fact that a response can have multiple items. The system can output multiple items. So in this case, the system will output a purchase order for more in inventory, but it will also output maybe some type of auto reorder report, some type of report. And as you'll notice, we can also, the destination, there's going to be multiple items here because the purchase order, that will go to the supplier. But think about who's the auto reorder report going to go to. Well, let's say in this case, the purchasing manager. And there you have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on event tables. Um, as you, as you notice, this is event tables. It's another way to model or make mod, create models for systems analysis. And event tables are very helpful in the, leading to the creation of use case diagrams, use case descriptions, because as you can see, we have all of our use cases here and many more essential details to help us determine what the information system to do. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for your time. And see you later.